It's a traditional thing I say to teams. First thing I want to know about this child, besides all this other data, is tell me about how he learns. Now, I'm going to tell you something else. I have actually given learning style inventories to teachers because we want to, if we're trying to make it as easy as we can, and we're trying to develop class size or, or class makeup or even intervention makeup, isn't it, doesn't it make sense that the person's learning styles match? Because then the ease of the implementation of whatever instruction becomes, you know, second nature. And so I try to build that in as well. And I will tell you the results. I do that in high schools. And I work with a lot of really big high schools. And I'll say, okay, this is what we're going to do. Let's look at learning styles. First yours, and then your kids. And just allowing these kids then access to that curriculum. Then you can get those foundational skills built. So that's very important. And then the qual we t just talked about the quality and how well we deliver the interventions. Very, very important. So to build the dream. Three important points in building a good dream or an RTI process, foundations. We have to have good foundations in response to intervention. The foundations we talk about is the understanding of the laws and the process. What are the laws that drive where we're going? Format. The district. What is the district's system? Now, the interesting thing about RTI is there should be a district shell or rubric, but then there should be campus ownership. So the district provides an alignment for our campus administrators, but the campus administrators know their kids the best. And, and I say this all the time, whether you're in a small district or a large district, no two campuses are alike. It, the makeup of your campus depends on your teachers, your, your kids, your parents. So we know that we should have some kind of rubric in place of the process. And we know that TEA is going to be required to give to the U.S. Department of Ed TEA's blueprint for response to intervention and how they're going to monitor it. And, and I, I will tell you this, the reason we're starting to see all this talk about RTI in Texas is because the United States Department of Ed is shifting how funding is being looked at and used in school districts, which is good. We want all kids to have access. But as you shift funds, you shift um, uh, accountability. And when you shift accountability, you have to have some way to measure it. And so TEA will be giving, in the fall of 2012, the United States Department of Ed their blueprint or rubric of how they're going to monitor RTI in our state. Now, TEA has made the decision that districts decide how they're going to do RTI, which I think is very good, very good. I work in some school districts, K through 12 is one building, the superintendent is the high school principal, well, and the bus driver. And then you have districts like Aldi, where that's virtually impossible. So it's real important that we understand the needs of our districts. But then, so each school district will be submitting some type of rubric to TEA about how they envision RTI is going to happen in their district. But then every campus then defines it for the campus. So that's important for you to know. So it's kind of a three-layer foundational piece. And it should all be aligned with the laws. And then, so under that format, what does the district look to do to help support our campus administrators as far as data collection and resources? Very important. And then what I tell school districts all the time is have a district-level RTI committee, and you have representative administrators on that committee from elementary, junior, and senior high, so that they can bring forth their concerns about the barriers they see with RTI, with the data collect collection, with the district supports, and move forward. And then, of course, the other third most important point is fidelity. Fidelity really impacts everything we do. Now, what impacts fidelity is the staff understanding of the RTI process, the team process, the intervention. And what I've been telling, just to let you know, I've been telling my secondary folks, do you know what they're doing in elementary? When they, if, you're, if you have an elementary campus that feeds into your school and they're using Lexia, do you know what it is? Do you understand it? Because what's going to happen is some of those kids are going to still need continued support when they come up to you. Now I tell elementary, do you know what we're doing at secondary for um, uh, adolescent literacy? and vocabulary enhancement, vocabulary development, so that we can get kids integrated for what? End of course exams. Well, I don't have to worry about that. I'm in elementary school. Oh, yes, you do. Now, I'll tell you one real quick story. I was working with the school district this year, and they were getting a visit from TEA. And I don't know if you're all aware of this, but getting a visit from TEA is not necessarily a positive <laughs> thing, right? And it was because of the high school. 
the high school was um, having some indicator issues, let's just say, with um, some of our subpopulations. I'm going to try to say that nice. So TEA was coming to visit the high school, but the elementary school, and it was a smaller school district, and the junior high school that fed into the high school were recognized campuses, things were going fine, high school was not. And I had an elementary teacher come and visit me because the superintendent said, well, we have to get an RTI process in place. So I went and we were talking. And she said to me, you know, with all due respect, Dr. Ogonoski, we're doing fine at our elementary school. I said, well, I'm really, I'm glad to hear that. Do you have any struggling learners? Well, we have a few. I said, well, this is for all kids, but especially your struggling learners. So I went away. TEA came to visit them. And because um, she was very resistant. She was polite, but resistant. And when I walked in the door, the next time I saw her, it was like she had seen the light. It was like she had an experience. And I'm like, oh, I'm so glad you're here. This RTI thing is going to be fantastic. And I'm kind of looking at her going, what happened? Because I was only a couple weeks. What happened was the TEA people walked over to her campus. And they randomly went into classrooms. And hers was one of them. And the woman started asking her questions about her reading instruction. And she, she politely said, well, I just was wondering why you're here talking to me. We're a recognized campus. And the TEA person said, we're trying to figure out how you can, this child could be in a, these children are recognized, recognized, and then at risk. They don't become at risk at high school. And I think the implication was they were teaching and focusing so much on the tax test, they weren't building the understanding and the comprehension that you need for higher order learning. So it's more than just learning or memorizing, it's really str strategies for learning and understanding those foundational skills. And she said her mouth just dropped right open. Because what TEA was saying is, we're not going to blame this on the high school. We're going back to where it began. And I thought that was a very interesting, that's change. That's change in saying that we're all in this together. So we want to have a foundation, a district support that the staff understands RTI K through 12. They understand that it's also important for staff development. Now, one of the things I will tell you that I'm seeing in several states, not just Texas, is that people will align an RTI process. They come up with their foundation. They'll give staff development the first year or two, and then it kind of goes away. Well, what happens once we stop, staff development's ongoing. It's book studies. It's lunch bunches. It's you know all that stuff. But the minute the staff development starts to kind of come off the layers there, then we start to see the RTI fidelity process decline. Now, I'm going to tell you something that's probably going to make you a little sick to your stomach, but I'm going to tell you this. We had a, we had a, a campus, principal call me, overheard one teacher tell another teacher, well, in this intervention, if you just move the mouse a few times, it registers that the student's still online. And the student wasn't even at the computer. And so fidel that's a fidelity issue. Because I'm going to tell you all right now, a lot of people want to blame the intervention and not how it's delivered. And when I have people say to me, well, Andrea, you've talked to me about Lexia. Let me, I'm not really sure I like Lexia. And I'm like, why? I mean, did you read the research on it? And well, we're just not getting the gains. And I'm like, well, let's talk about how are you using it? And that's when, well, you know, did you train your persons on how to use it? Do they understand how to interpret it? Well, you know, we had budget cuts, and now we have a, we have a new paraeducator that's coming in, and, you know, she's just new to the job, and we didn't have enough to, and then you start to hear those things. So what happens for me with Fidelity is getting with our administrators and saying, you do understand, in order for this to work, we have to support our teachers, and we support them through staff development.